Just a quick note that this interview is brought to you by Talkspace, an amazing service that allows you to have therapy anytime. It's awesome that they're partnering with us to produce some of these interviews around mental health. Uh, please stick around after the interview so that you can learn more. Hello everyone, a bit of a different interview uh, today. This is sponsored by uh, Talkspace and I'm joined by Jason Docton right now to talk about his work uh, at Rise Above the Disorder, uh, which is a nonprofit in the gaming space. That, and I, would you say gaming and esports, Jason? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gaming, gaming and esports, esports space. space. <laughs> uh, working to, to help promote and assist uh, better mental health. Uh, is, that, is that the best way to describe sort of the mission that you have? Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. It's, it's making sure everybody has access to mental health care. Very good. Well, uh, I think one thing in particular that my audience might be interested in is just sort of the the role that you have with the LCS because you've actually uh, worked with some of the LCS folks and you're on the Players Association board. But before we get into that, I kind of want to just get a little bit of background on uh, what your organization is and sort of how it approaches uh, promoting mental health uh, and and making it accessible to all sorts of folks and may maybe you can give a little bit of background on yourself and the organization sure sure I mean rad um, rad truly is is an approach towards universal mental health care we're we are a nonprofit that covers the cost of mental health care for thousands of people around the world um, you know it all started as a world of Warcraft guild actually <laughs> almost 10 years ago and a bunch of us were trying to crowdfund mental health care for people and eventually figured out that, you know, most of us stay home all day and play World of Warcraft. We're pretty good. We don't have much money. Therapy is really expensive. So how do we how do we use what we have to pay for people's therapy? Um, and one of us had the bright idea of what if we boosted people to pay for therapy? Yeah. <laughs> and sure enough. And that worked. We boosted people in WoW. Then we boosted people in League when League came out. A bunch of content creators noticed what we were doing uh, in the early Justin TV days, decided to fundraise for us. And we became a nonprofit just dedicated to, to making sure that everybody could have therapy covered. So I understand that the mission is to, to have it be a universal mental health situation, but you specifically, uh, and the organization specifically, works around uh, the gaming space. So was it just sort of your gaming background and that, that foundation that led you guys to really focus on on the gaming side? Um, I don't know if there's plans in the future to broaden out beyond it. I, sort of what really led you to, to this industry? I think it's just all that I know. Um, I've been a gamer my whole life. Um, I grew up in and out of foster care. I had a lot of tough times and one of the things that was really consistent is, you know, anywhere I go, people started to have computers, computers had games, and in those games, I could escape from a lot of it. You know, StarCraft came out when I was young, and I was obsessed with StarCraft, loved making maps. Diablo 2 was, you know, what led me to struggle throughout middle school, because all I cared was farming Mephisto <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> Um, and then WoW came out, and that that was it. That's that was all I did. Yeah, I uh, I think there's a lot of people who can identify, including myself, with just the uh, the growing up with video games and having it be a, a place for you to really, you know, feel comfortable. So I I appreciate that. I let's let's talk a little bit about some of the work that you have done in the LCS because, you know, every now and then you kind of hear some rumor around a player having some like mental health struggles, um, dealing with, with some pretty big challenges. And a lot of the stuff I think, you know, pe people kind of tend to disregard. There's a lot of Reddit and Twitter and social media pressure to say like, oh, you know, you, people are pay getting paid so much money, they should just focus on performance. Why are they struggling? You know, there, there's not too much sensitivity, I think, around some of the, the challenges and stresses that these uh, athletes go through. So maybe you can speak a little bit to some of the, the work that you've done with the LCS teams in particular. Yeah. Um, you know, when, in the early times that I worked with the LCS, um, a lot of it was crisis related. Uh, somebody 
just really struggling, having experienced something tremendously overwhelming, whether it was a, a death in the family, a major feud between themselves and another player, to um, you know, relationship issues were, were a really common uh, concern early on, and trying to to help, I guess everybody come down from that that situation help everybody manage things that were going on. Um, it wasn't necessarily stuff that I was, I was thrilled to do because it always felt like I was being called in really late in the game yeah. versus we could have been talking about our mental health really months and months ago. Um, but it, it was work that helped to get us introduced to a lot of people. Um, it, interestingly enough, one of the first offices that we ever had was at the CLG house. So, uh, you know, uh, back when, when Devin Nash and George were still there running everything, we were right there actually in the kitchen, working away, helping people all over the world. And then, you know, looking up and seeing how everyone was doing, checking in. This was at the Arcadia house, I assume. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, yes, I, I remember the, uh, the house and and how many how many people were packed in there um and so it's it's a pretty big compound though so it's it's cool to hear that uh you had such like a an early connection with with the lcs uh, how has that evolved over time because you said that was kind of like the early work you were doing a lot of uh responding in these kind of crisis moments uh, how has that changed as the league has matured yeah you know we have really leaned into being almost um, like a, a wide resource for players to connect with professionals. Any player that has been wanting to talk with a therapist, sit down with somebody that actually understands what they're experiencing, understands what their career is like, what it's like to, to deal with this unique level of stress. We have so many different therapists that do that day in and day out. Uh, so it's really easy for us to make those connections very quickly and get somebody started seeing a professional. Um, but there's also a lot of uh, some of the things I think that most people don't really think about, like how how do we integrate a player who's just come here from South Korea? How do we integrate a player that's moving from the EU? What does the cultural side look like that? How does that impact their mental health uh, schedules? You know, when we when we first started helping people in the LCS, it was really easy because it was like, okay, so this person wakes up at 7 a.m. and practices, then they go into scrims, then they stream until they go to bed, and you're curious why they're not doing well. Okay, so yeah. let's let's start over here. Um, but you know, a lot of teams bring us in just even for those kinds of things. How do we how do we maximize and make sure that every player is is feeling well, um, at least as much as a team can do to help a player feel well. So uh, that work, I assume, is part of the reason why you have ended up on the, the board, the Players Association board for the LCS, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I've known Darshan for um, a couple of years. Uh, initially met him while we were at the CLG house, actually. And, you know, we just reconnected maybe two years ago. Um, and caught him up on a lot of the work that we had done since leaving the CLG house. And we both were really committed to player wellness and understanding what is going on with players, what stress they face, if there are issues that, uh, you know, teams could, could mend, you know, simple fixes there, or what can the league as a whole do to take care of players? Uh, how can we get these resources to players? Um, all of this was conversations or were conversations we were having long before the PA. And so um, when the Players Association started to reform, and, you know, I know I've done an interview with, with Phil, who is uh, the executive director, I believe, of uh, the, the organization. But for you, you know, what, what encouraged you to become part of the board and, you know, where do you think that you're able to kind of help that organization out uh, given your previous experience? There were a few things that I, I believed that I could be of help with. You know, one, the, the PA is a nonprofit. Um, you know, running this as a nonprofit, being able to sustain um, initially 
you know, lending feedback on how do we form or reform, how do we amend some of our documents and make sure everything is, is good. Yeah, because there's um, a ton of business stuff involved in all that paperwork and all that. I'm sure you've had experience on the, the nonprofit Unfortunately. Side, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lots of paperwork, lots of lawyers. Um, but, you know, through and through, it's it's about player well-being. Players experience a lot of different things that we look at in different lights. You know, we, I think, have seen a lot of media uh, attention around player contracts, what these player contracts are like. We've seen some of these big orgs, even outside of the LCS, um, deal with abusing players through contracts. Um, that's that's all a side that I can't necessarily touch because it's all legal stuff. But the emotional toll that takes, the the abuse of power in those situations, how that shapes a player's career as they go through and maybe are no longer comfortable speaking out, navigating these kinds of contracts because this is what they've experienced. When no one is talking about these things, nobody can really identify that uh, maybe I, I could say something about this. Maybe this is wrong. It's more, well, everybody just accepts this. So I guess I, I accept this too, even if it makes me uncomfortable. Um, you know, even looking at uh, COVID as players are starting to return to the studio, what is that going to be like? It, it, are people genuinely concerned? Um, is there a, a fear there that exists? Is there anxiety, stress that we can be addressing? Um, how do we give teams the right guidelines? How do we approach Riot to share these concerns and make sure that a player's mental well-being is taken care of? Because if you're playing and a lot of the time there's anxiety of, could I catch COVID while I'm here? That's a legitimate fear. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice to sort of hear how proactive you are in thinking through this stuff. I mean, obviously, we've we've only recently seen the players uh, return to the the studio. In fact, this past weekend, I guess, and maybe this weekend too, not going to be be in the studio. But it's uh, it's great to to hear that you guys are kind of looking out on that stuff because, as you said in the beginning of this discussion, oftentimes I think people tend to think of mental health as a thing that you you need to tackle when perhaps it's. Uh, certainly not uh, too late, but certainly things have come to a head, right? Yeah, uh, it's like less proactive. So it's cool to hear that that is something that you are are focusing on. There's a lot of fans, I think, who don't necessarily understand what a lot of these players go through. Um, you probably in a position, maybe even more than than me, despite the relationships I have with a lot of these guys, to know the struggles that they experience. You know. Can you speak to any of that, to, to sort of the challenges that these guys face, the stress and, and burdens that are on them? Sure. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a lot of the, the daily things that um, don't often come up that I, I see a lot uh, in sessions between, you know, what is what does my career look like after this? Um, you know, there's there are some people that go on, you know, like a crumbs that will will cast for a while and do all kinds of fun stuff. And then there are some players that, that that's it. They leave the LCS and you don't hear about them again. Um, there are players that, that really worry what, what happens after this. Players who have dropped out of school for this, whether it was as early as high school or college. What's next? What, what could possibly be waiting for me? Um, a lot of fear around that. There's a lot of, of isolation, too. It's a demanding career. You are almost always scheduled into something. Um, sometimes your schedule is not even managed by you. And so you just have to go along with whatever there is and whatever you wanted to do. Too bad. Yeah. You know, we're watching people play games and we're so excited because that, that seems like the dream career. Um, but too much of, of any one thing is, is never good. And so a lot of players that I work with, they don't even like the game anymore. <laughs> they're, just, yeah. they're so burnt out of the game. If they could get a break from it, they could love it again and find that passion again. But we're, we're in the middle of, okay, a break is what I would recommend, but you're realistically 
feel you can't take a break. So how do we, how do we stay, uh, I guess, less stressed? How, how do we manage this current environment? Um, and there's a lot of, of complexity between, you know, the fans and, and the players. It's, it's one thing to make a mistake and, you know, think about it critically as a player and want to improve. Uh, and another thing for hundreds of thousands of people to see that mistake and make sure that you know you made a mistake that impacts them somehow. Yeah. Um, and to be bombarded with that. <laughs> That's uh, always, always gets to me. Just uh, some of the, the hateful comments that, that are seen and players that have either turned themselves off to it entirely or have had to create things in their life, structures in their life to get away from that. You know, I don't allow myself to be on Twitter after this hour. I don't allow myself to go on this subreddit anymore. All, all kinds of stuff that they just shouldn't have to do, but it makes sense. Yeah. So the way they, they navigate it. Well, uh, I want to thank you so much for this. One of the things that uh, I know as part of your, your mission to provide a universal uh, mental health care on this stuff, uh, you guys operate as a nonprofit. So for the folks that are watching this, you know, how can they support your endeavor and your organization? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, making a donation, uh, I think every nonprofit, you know, can make donations go really far. But I, I really firmly believe that the donations to RAD are so powerful because they end up in our community. You're funding the therapy of somebody you might have queued up against, somebody that uh, you are in the same subreddit as, somebody who has just wanted to get help and cost has stood in the way for them. Uh, being able to to make their healing possible is a really powerful thing and directly changes our everyday communications, interactions as this community heals. So. You know, if you want to donate in that way or you can donate in that way, it's always appreciated. Um, otherwise, just following us on social, supporting our mission, you know, by by standing behind it, throwing the likes, the retweets, you know, <laughs> that, that kind of stuff. It, it just lends more credibility to this being possible, that, that we can run our own mental health care system. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's great to hear that. I will make sure that I get that link from you and stick it in the the YouTube description for those that are watching on, on YouTube. And as we're streaming this on Twitch, I will make sure that that ends up in the, uh, the Twitch chat as well. But Jason, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk to me. Is there anything here? I always at the end of my interviews offer folks a chance to say anything to anybody out there, um, fans or players or anything like that. Uh, so anything you'd like to say? Sure. Sure. Um, you know, I, I love to, to talk about stress and, mention stress on on its most basic level uh, there are a lot of people that still don't fully understand mental health it's a really complex field to look at even when we just look at psychology and the study of our of our mental health and behaviors but beyond depression beyond anxiety beyond all of the disorders everybody experiences stress and when we experience stress for too long it takes a toll on us. It really impacts us. These players are in an environment where the stress is almost never ending. They have to get up at certain times. They have to go to sleep at certain times. They have to play at a certain level, practice, stream, all of these expectations. Even if it seems like the things that they're doing are fun and relatively low stress, it's endless. It's constant. The burnout is inevitable. Um, so I just hope that uh, maybe that helps bring some some level of empathy to these players. And certainly if you want to learn more about this and, and understand, you're welcome to reach out and we can we can talk about it. Jason, thank you so much for the conversation. Uh, really great words uh, throughout this. And I think uh, hopefully very helpful for people who are trying to learn a little bit more about some of the challenges that uh, everyone faces, but especially with the LCS, the, the players in particular. So uh, thank you so much for the interview. And for everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things LCS right here on my YouTube channel. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that interview. It's been great to just talk a little bit more and focus more on uh, some mental health topics on the channel. And we wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for Talkspace supporting 
the content that we're doing around this. Uh, they are an amazing service that allows you to have therapy anytime. It is very intimidating sometimes whenever you go to try to hunt down a therapist or find somebody who can help you. But using Talkspace, you can actually just match directly with a therapist. They help you uh, figure out somebody to speak with. And, it, you know, it, it's something that allows you to message at any point in time. You can write as much as you want. So whenever you feel you really need to speak with somebody, you can. And therapists are available five days a week to reply. So it's not something where you're scheduling an appointment and you're stru stuck around that. It's really a therapy that you can you know, talk to anybody anytime uh, for. And so we have a really cool deal that we are doing in coordination with Talkspace right now that will save you a ton of money on your first month. So it really allows you to just give the service a try and see if you like it. Uh, there's a link in the description as well as you, the code, which is Travis, and you can use to sign up. Uh, doing so really helps out the channel. And uh, and again, I just it's great to have Talkspace on board as a partner helping us as we talk a little bit more about mental health stuff because that's something that I think during uh, these crazy times, a lot of us could probably use some support with. So again, thank you to Talkspace and thank you all for giving them a try.